Hey everybody, today is Thursday, September 28th, 2023, and we're here in Fraser, Pennsylvania on this gloomy, disgusting, cold, and rainy Pennsylvania day. I was honestly hoping for another nice day like yesterday, but no, we're, we're back to the gloom and doom. We had four days of disgusting, rainy weather, and it looks like we might have another four days of disgusting, rainy weather. So, it is what it is, but we're here in Fraser, Pennsylvania. And the reason why we are in Fraser, Pennsylvania is to visit the Hyam Solomon Memorial Park and Community Mausoleum. As you can see, it's a Jewish cemetery. And once again, my feet are getting wet from walking through this tall, wet grass. But the reason why we're out here at this cemetery is to visit the grave of a very famous folk singer and songwriter from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, who is buried out here. I've known about this grave for a while now. I've meant to come out here for a while now and check this out. I figure today was a day we finally do this. I picked the best day to once again come out to a, a cemetery. We're here at 200 Moores Road, again in Fraser, Pennsylvania, to find the grave of a very, very famous folk singer who I get into you once we find the grave, once we start talking about the singer, you're going to know exactly who he is, who he is, and you're going to know at least one of his songs. So again, we're here at the Hyam Solomon Memorial Park in Fraser, Pennsylvania, and now we have to hunt down the grave of this singer. And I literally mean hunt it down because I have no idea where he's buried. So the grave we're actually out here to find is that of Jim Croce. Now that name does sound familiar to you. It honestly should. He was a very famous singer, songwriter, folk singer from the 60s and 70s. And I'd say arguably probably his best well-known song. The song that if I was to play for you, you'd go, okay, I know this song. You'd probably be able to sing along to it. At least the chorus anyway would be that of Big Bad Leroy Brown. I do believe that was his only song to go number one, though with that being said, while he was alive and even after his death, many of his songs were also popular as well. But the reason why we're out here is to visit the grave of this amazing singer, songwriter, who unfortunately did come to a very untimely death, passed away way, way, way too soon at the height of his popularity, passed away in a plane crash. And surprisingly, we've already found his grave. It really wasn't that difficult to find. If you do want to come out here looking for this grave, you simply drive up the main drive to the house, hang a right, park at the, the first tree, and it's right, right over here, the grave of Jim Croce. So Jim Croce actually is from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Although he did move all around the United States during his career, he did eventually come back to the Philadelphia, Pennsylvania area after kind of becoming fed up with the music industry and whatnot. He sort of took a, a bit of a, of a, a different path in his life, but um, he's still stuck with music. He still continued to record music and um, his, his popularity actually started to grow more and more and more. And you see right here is his grave that many people have been out here to visit. All kinds of stones left for him. There's coins, there's guitar picks, there's a Jim Croce painted rock. That's awesome. There's another rock down here with the name Jim on it. Pretty awesome that so many people have been out here to pay their respects. There's a butterfly keychain. Born 1943, passed away in 1973. So like I said, untimely death. Unfortunately, did pass away in a plane crash that probably should not have actually happened during the, the height of of his career and now he's buried out here and I'm also digging the fact that somebody left a railroad spike for him. That is pretty awesome. One of the most interesting things about Jim Croce's music is the fact that he wrote about so many real life things and about real life people because he worked all these, these odd jobs over the years. Even during his music career, even while he was still writing and recording, he would work odd jobs to, to make money to to fund his his dream of of music and he he worked all these different all these different jobs that just would be blue collar jobs and wrote songs about the people he worked with wrote songs about the jobs he did so that's why you see things like railroad ties 
and whatnot left on his on his grave. And I think that's why his music touched so many people and so many people could relate to his music because it wasn't written about things that your your average Joe would not know about. Just somebody listening to his music would go, okay, I, I worked a job like that. I knew a guy, I knew a guy like that. So his music really related to a lot of people and struck a chord, if you will, with, with a lot of people, which is why his music did become very, very popular. But again, unfortunately, during the height of his career, his life was, was tragically cut short. So he passed away on September 20th, 1973. We're only a couple of days past the anniversary of his death. Died in a plane crash, actually during the takeoff of a plane. He was out performing to promote his, his newest album, boarded a plane to, I believe it was Texas, to again, do some performing when his plane struck a tree during takeoff. And the, the story goes that the, the pilot wasn't necessarily fit for, for flying. He had some, some issues and whatnot, and he, he probably should not have been operating a plane. And on top of that, it was very foggy out that day. So during takeoff, they actually crashed into a tree. And unfortunately, I do believe everybody on board did, did pass away, including Jim Croce, whose career was, was just taking off. Though the, the really sad part of the story is he had just written his, his wife a letter telling her that he wanted to quit the music business. He wanted to stop. He wanted to stop doing music, focus more on his family so that he could be home with his, his family. He wanted to become a, a writer, a, a book writer, and I believe a, a movie writer as, as well. And he, he had written this letter to his wife saying, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quit music. I'm done with music. I'm, I'm fed up with music. I'm away from, I'm away from home for, for way too long, long, too long periods of time. I'm away from, from you and, and, our, and our child, and I want to I be home with you guys. And he wrote this note. He, he wrote this letter, sent it off. He unfortunately passed away in the plane crash. And a few days later, that letter showed up at his wife's house. I can only imagine how devastating that must have been to have received a letter from, like, a, a, almost a ghost letter, if you will, from your, your dead husband who had just recently passed away. And such a sad, sad letter telling you that he wanted to be, he, he loved you and he wanted to be with you more and he wanted to give up his his passion, his career to be with you, to be with his family. And unfortunately, he he had passed passed away in a, in a death that honestly probably shouldn't have happened. Another piece of interesting history is the fact that Jim Croce wasn't actually born Jewish. He did not come from a Jewish family, was not born into Judaism. He converted to Judaism when he married his wife, Ingrid, who I'm going to assume will eventually be buried right next to him. She is still alive to this day. So that's a really nice thing of him to have to have done, to convert him to Judaism for his wife, who, again, I'm going to assume that his, his wife and their family were a very strong Jewish faith, and thus he wanted to convert to, to make her and her family happy again very nice thing to do which is why he is buried out here today in a jewish cemetery and why we see stones and pebbles placed all around his grave that is a jewish tradition to symbolize that somebody was was remembering you somebody who who cared about you was out here at your grave because the hebrew word for pebble is actually another word for for bond so interesting little piece of um of jewish trivia for you they're pretty awesome. I kind of wish I would have brought a penny or a stone or, or something to have left on the grave. I don't know if you actually had to be Jewish and of Jewish faith yourself to, to leave a stone. Comments down below if that, um, if that really matters. If you're, if you're not Jewish yourself, can you still leave a stone on a grave? Is that an okay thing to do? I'm not entirely sure, but I kind of wish I would have, I would have brought a, um, a stone out. I do have some change in the car. Maybe I'll go back and, uh, and get a penny. Okay. So gone back to the car, grab myself a uh, penny here to leave on the grave. I get a penny symbolizing kind of the same thing as a stone or a pebble, memorializing somebody showing that somebody who cared was out here to remember you. Like I said before, I'm not entirely sure what the correlation between that and, and coins are, but, um, we're still going to leave a coin, a penny here on the grave of Jim Jim Croce, again, born 
1943, passed away 1973. Way, way, way too young during the height of his, his career. Tragic ending in a plane crash right, right before he was actually contemplating and telling his wife that he was going to quit working in the music industry to be home with his family more often. Terrible, awful, tragic story of a great, amazing singer-songwriter. All right, guys, but I do think that's just about gonna do it for this video, but again, wanted to bring you out here to see the grave of singer, songwriter, folk singer, Jim Croce, here in Fraser, Pennsylvania. But we do need to bring this video to an end because as you can see right over there, they're getting ready for a, um, for a burial and they're doing all sorts of things out here. People have been walking back and forth. They were, they were doing something over there a minute ago. So I'm thinking that uh, any minute now, people are probably gonna start showing up for this burial. And as much as I would love to continue to hang out here and talk to you guys more about the music and the life of Jim Croce, I'm thinking that uh, the people over there during their service would not appreciate that unless they're big maybe they're big fans of of Jim Croce and his music maybe they'd come over and and want to pay their respects as well and and talk about the the life and times and the the music of of Jim Croce so anyway guys with that we are done if you're a fan of the music of Jim Croce leave your comments down below if you've actually been out here to visit the grave of Jim Croce leave your comments down below I love to hear about that but again with that we are done. So as always, guys, thank you so much for checking out this video. Be sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, check down below for links to Patreon. If you guys do become a patron, I will send you a postcard every single month from the road. Also check down below for a link to Spreadshirt, where you can grab yourself retro rest stop t-shirts, proceeds, both from Spreadshirt and from Patreon to help support the show. They keep the show going. They bring us out to awesome and amazing places like this. They bring us out to places where we can remember those who may have, may have changed our lives, touched our lives, just made us a little bit more happy. People like Jim Croce right here, making us happy with his amazing song. So like I said, check down below for all the different links. And if you guys watch this video all the way until the very, very end, I don't know, what should today's hashtag be? Let's say hashtag, um, let's say hashtag, hashtag big bad Leroy Brown. If you guys watch this video, all the way until the very end. So again, like I said, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. And if you do hit that subscribe button or you are subscribed, then I will see you guys in the next video. One more shot of the grave of Jim Croce. All right, guys, thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.